Let's dance and sing. To Patty, thank you for teaching us to be healthy. Hello and welcome to Food with Life. I am your host, Chapati, and we're here with a very, very, very special guest. He's the director of the Hippocrates Health Institute, a wonderful healing institute in uh, Florida. And uh, it's my honor to welcome Dr. Brian Clemens. Welcome. Nice to be with you today. Very nice to have you. Your institute is brilliant, it's so holistic. I've read a number of things about it online, uh, deals with the mind, body, spirit, a whole range of things having to do with health. I must ask you, of all the beautiful knowledge that you espouse there, what would you say is the most important one thing that people should keep in mind to become healthy? Um, Self-love. Self -love. The most important thing is to find uh, the part of themselves they uh, enjoy the most, that they're mm -hmm. passionate about, that they embrace. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, uh, then of course everything else falls into place naturally. Uh, people eat correctly and exercise and all of the other more mundane things that we too often focus on. Yeah, you know I came up with a saying a long time back, it's love. L-O-V-E. And that means love our very existence. Yeah, you're not kidding. That's a great way to look at it. You know, and so I, I thank you. The Hippocrates Health Institute has so many programs that deal with health and vitality. I know one of the most interesting things to me was the emphasis on um, raw food. Yes, well, what's really interesting is when you look at every creature on earth, in nature, they eat a hundred percent raw diet. Uh, no animal no creature uh, cooks food other than our species. Uh, and, you know, somehow the academic and intellectual and scientific community has avoided looking at that. And when you cook a food, you denature it. Uh, not only are the vitamins gone, uh, the proteins compromised, uh, the minerals in great part are destroyed at some level. You also have the essential fats that become carcinogens when you cook and become acrylamides, uh, which are other carcinogens. But what we discovered over the last six decades of Hippocrates is you have hormones, oxygen, phytochemicals, and enzymes. We call it the new era of hope. And that's all completely abolished once you get above 115 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 42 degrees Celsius. Now I have a question, you know, I'm very much steeped in Ayurveda. Yes. And an important part of, of digestion is inner body heat. Yes. You know, fire. You know, and sometimes not everybody has enough fire, enough heat to digest food very well. Yes. Especially raw food. So what do you suggest to someone who has that difficulty and they need to eat maybe not overcooked foods, but, you know, lightly cooked foods? What would you suggest to them? Well, what we have to understand about Ayurvedic medicine, which I studied in India, when Prime Minister Desai brought Ann Wigmore and I there, where we went around the country for a couple of months in health camps and practiced uh, raw food on highly diseased people. And I went to Hyderabad, which was the center, really, of Ayurvedic medicine at the Nature Cure Hospital there that had 15,000 patients at once. And it was really enlightening to me that uh, 5,000 years ago, this system of health began, how incredibly brilliant it was without them knowing much. They didn't know about anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, uh, all of the advantages we have today. And so with that said, uh, we've learned a lot about the body and how it functions in the biochemistry of the body. So if you adapt a proper raw food diet to particular body types, it's always doable. You know, we for 60 years now have been working with every kind of body type you can imagine from all over the world, young, old, men, women. 
And what we found that you can always make a living food or a raw food diet appropriate if you know how to tweak it. So, regardless of your constitution, if you have some uh, imbalance in that in the direction of raw food, there's some way to adjust the diet so you can indeed be able to um, digest it comfortably. Absolutely. See, it was a de-evolution of human beings that we started to eat cooked food. Uh, we were all raw food eaters when we were nomads, going from place to place. And the cooking became prominent, I actually believe, for a practical reason, uh, that when the population became more than hundreds of thousands and went into millions of people, what we ended up having is a situation where people lived in close proximity, infection started to spread. And what they recognized instinctually, because they didn't have scientists in those days, is that when you cooked the food, you didn't get the infection. But what they failed to recognize, you also denatured the food. And the life force was gone. Now, if you study, as I did, a lot of the great uh, Indian philosophers, uh, going back to the origins, they told people to consume raw food. And uh, it's the highest level of energy, of right, course, and right. brings you to the highest level of conscious right. states. We take a break and we continue. I am your Chapati with our wonderful guest, Dr. Brian Clements. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food with Life. I'm Yorch Chapati with our special guest, Dr. Brian Clements, director of the Pocketry's Health Institute. And we're talking a bit, a bit about um, healing, digestion, and wellness, which everybody would like to have. So that you, uh, there are definite um, adjustments you can make, you know, to have your body eat raw food. You know, even though you may not have the, um, the heat inside. So let me ask, the benefits of raw food, I know it's, it's nourishing, it's cleansing, it um, improves the alkalinity, acidity in the body. Can you say something about, A, a the nourishment of raw well, food versus something that might not be raw? If you look at the beginning of the 21st century, one of the great findings is the significance of water. Uh, we now know that there's a fourth phase of water. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been taught in science from the time we were children that you have solid, which is ice, and you have vapor, which is boiling, and you have liquid, which is the normal state of water. Well, the real purpose of water, it's a conductor and a projector of electromagnetic energy. Now, when you cook a food, what comes out inherently is, is a water content. Mm -hmm. And it's the knowledge from the food, it's the coating of the nutrition, and it's the history of what those nutrients do uh, to the human body to sustain it, to maintain it, to keep it young, to keep it vital. Mm -hmm. So that's the first problem with it. So you mentioned uh, the word hope, H, H. Let's start with hormones. Okay, well hormones are very interesting. They're the chemistry in the body that's an actual language. And when cells are dying, every second you have millions of cells dying, they ejaculate out the whole history from the time you were conceived and possibly before. And it goes into the new stem cell that becomes part of the bone and part of the blood and part of the cell structure, tissue, soft tissue, etc. So where do you get that reserve of hormones from raw, uncooked, plant-based food? Oxygen when you actually cook a food, the fragrance that's coming out is the oxygen leaving it. So I always say breathe heavy over cooking. Mm -hmm. And the oxygen we've known since 1917 is required for nutrients to truly digest. Right. And so that's in the raw food. Mm -hmm. Phytochemicals, the most outstanding, uh, which we don't have time to speak about, but you should study this and look into it, all the listeners. Yes. These are the actual medicines that are there to protect you from disease and premature aging and actually help to reverse disease and premature aging. Our reputation at Hippocrates for all these thousands of people recovering, it's because of those phytochemicals. Phytochemicals, I, I must interject, you know, phyto is light. Plant. So to me, it's the energy from the sun that is transmitted. Into Absolutely. That, that chemical. No? Phyto is plant and plant. photo. Photo. Photo, mm. yeah. 
photos. That, and then enzymes. Uh, your body is really electric. Yeah. And so the most important nutrient other than water and oxygen happens to be enzymes. And you only get that in raw food. Once you cook it, these life force are gone. So hormones, oxygen, phytochemicals, and enzymes. Okay, we're going to take a break, and then we'll continue with this brilliant uh, information. I am your host, Chapati. This is Food with Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Food with Life. I'm your Chapati with our special guest, Dr. Brian Clemens of Hippocrates Health Institute. Um, so I was going to ask you a bit, you know, everybody wants to be healthy, healthier. Yes. Even people who are healthy want to be healthier. And they want to live longer. Yes. You know, to infinity. <laughs> yes. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do in different places. In spaces. different ways, yes. Different ways. So, is there some type of equation that you might suggest for people, or some formula people could use? Well, well, we'll go back to where we began and then expound on it. Uh, when a person has self-respect and love, they have a depth of desire to maintain and contribute. And so it's only passion that gives you the strength to give. And so that's the first step, that's the equation. Now once you're at that place of a passionate existence, then, of course, you fuel it with raw food that is in total sync with the rest of the universe. Uh, the spark of life, as we call it, that actually raises the energy field, the chi in the body and the consciousness and gets you in tune with what we would call universal understandings and truth. But then equally important from the work that has been done at Harvard by Dr. Ratte, we understand that consciousness is also provoked by movement, aerobic exercise. And when we start to look at that, it actually increases your ability to become more conscious, more capable, and live longer. We also know from the work that was done in Germany recently that when a person develops muscle from either hatha yogic type of practices or weightlifting as I do, uh, you basically then have hormones coming from those muscles that keep the libido and the mind young and healthy. So one of the reasons when people age, they start to lose memory is because they don't have muscle mass left anymore. And the work that was done at your old alma mater, Tufts University, basically, by Dr. Mayer, confirmed the same thing, going back 35, 40 years ago, about centurions uh, who were active in developing muscle uh, did it the same way a 16-year-old child did. Mm -hmm. And so these are all important factors that we've studied empirically at Hippocrates over the last 60 years, and we actually employ. And equally important to us, uh, I don't like to call it religious, but your spiritual connectivity, where you realize that you're not alone, that you're part of a larger whole. Now, whatever that is to you, uh, you know, I don't think one brand works. I think whatever brand is working for you works. That's what I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're talking about a lifestyle for, for generally, quote, everyone, but, you know, everyone doesn't fit into this sort of thing, that's, you know? That's right. Some people, people in Ayurveda, they, I could not imagine them stopping to stopping their uh, cooked food, you know? Right. And people who are raw food, I can't imagine them starting to eat cooked food, right. you know? So how does one fit into the another type of system so they can adapt? Well, I had a privileged insight because back in the 1970s, the Prime Minister of India, uh, Desai, uh, brought Anne Wigmore, our founder of Hippocrates, and I to his country. And we spent two and a half months there in health camps uh, with up to 5,000 ill people in these camps with a team of medical doctors. And what we were doing at that point is observing uh, how to transform people from a traditional Ayurvedic type mm -hmm. of a lifestyle to a raw lifestyle. Now what we think is that uh, this is a healing lifestyle because healing has more to do with energy than any other one factor. And so when you increase the energy, the frequency, of your body and your cells in your body by putting energetic food into it, then it raises the potential for that immune system to then fight the disease and conquer it. Equally, the same thing with aging. We can slow down the aging process, or the premature aging process, we should say. Can we take up this in just a minute? Yeah. This is fascinating, but 
I don't want our sponsors to run away. Okay. <laughs> Stay with us. Please, this is Food with Life. We'll be right back with our wonderful guest, Dr. Brian Clements. Welcome back to Food with Life. I am your Chipati with our special guest, Dr. Brian Clemens from Hippocrates Health Institute. So, you were just beginning to touch on this about impressions, actions, and desires, and so forth. Well, at Hippocrates, we created a 21-day program. And although I've talked to some of the great uh, authors of psychology and psychiatry, we're not really sure why, but we all know that it takes 21 days to break a habit. Mm -hmm. It's cyclical. It's three times seven in the cycle of seven. Mm -hmm. Now, what we also know is from the work I did decades ago with Monroe, from the Monroe Institute, is that if you use sound, frequency, and light, you actually permeate the cell structure and break the patterns, habitual patterns, that are repeated and repeated. And uh, his work was brilliant that started in the 1950s and 1960s. He was way ahead of his time. Uh, so this is what we do. We use a lot of electromagnetic and cold laser, cyber scan, H-wave, undermed therapies, and it's actually reprogramming people in a genteel way so that uh, rather than say reprogram, what it does is bring them back to who they really are. It doesn't really force anything. It actually tickles the body back into being happy once again, we should say. <laughs> that's a joy. I yeah. know that's a key, a critical thing is um, bottom line is happiness, you yeah, know? That's the key. So you can do whatever you want, and so many people these days, they're, do, they're not happy. They're yes. caught up more in activity and work and this and that, yeah. and um, they're just going, going, going. So They have the FF, for false fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to see it, you yeah, know? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, many years I would teach meditation, and you'd see them come in sometimes, like, they were the end of the world. Yeah. And then after they began to some self-practice and got in touch with their center, they would suddenly become alive. Yeah, if we have to humble ourselves, and we, we all have it so good, uh, most of us listening today. You know, we have homes, we have food, we have people that love us, we have work, we have right. security. And why bring about all of this negativity in our life? Uh, humble and relax and be uh, gracious and have gratitude. Right. And, you know, then your life becomes worth living. Very much. Are there any particular foods that you could suggest for people that might um, let them sit back more? It is a psychology, but yet in some way the, the mind and body go very well together. Oh, you know? absolutely. So and foods that you suggest or something with their diet that would actually allow them to be more at ease. Yeah, if you look, for instance, at the Ayurvedic principles, uh, where you would talk about the use of particular cooked foods to calm the body, I would talk about root vegetables mm -hmm. without the high fructose or sugar content. So in our generation, we ate a lot of ruta rutabag and turnips. These are great foods to calm the body. There are certain sprouts, as an example. We take hops, the same thing they put into beer, but we take the seed and we sprout it. It's phenomenally relaxing to the body. And it actually puts you at ease and calms you without having a narcotic effect on you. Uh, we also recognize that foods that have high vibration from the sun, as we spoke earlier, we talked about photons, also have that enlightenment factor that nothing else really does. So drinking juices made out of sprouts are phenomenally effective in grounding you and giving you a larger view of reality, as we it should say. It has to be fresh juice. It has to yeah. be fresh. You can't buy it in, in a bottle. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, you, know, you go into stores and there's volumes of juice. Absolutely. You know, juice that's been squeezed or used or squeezed or pressed maybe years ago. Oh, know? it could be. We know that in 15 minutes <laughs> all the benefits that we've discussed today are gone. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with this wonderful knowledge. Thank you. I am your host, Chapati. This is Food with Life. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Food with Life. I am your host, Chapati, with our wonderful special guest, Dr. Brian Clemens of the Hippocrates Health Institute. 
So you had touched on a bit more uh, about laser therapy, uh, electromagnetic ideas. Um, yeah. Explain to me how they work here. Well, when people hear laser, they think of surgery, they think of cutting, but there's a coal laser that actually today is really extraordinary on a scientific level. It's in a way collecting photons from the sun and mimicking them. Mm. So it permeates the body without any invasion. And so when we have, for instance, a part of a body that there may be a tumor mass in or a circulatory problem, when you start to inject that light, it goes right through and stimulates healthy cells to start to erode the concern that one person has. Electromagnetics the same. You know, the body works on a particular hertz and frequency. And when you're sick, it's either too high or too low. And so what we're trying to do is like harness the electromagnetic frequency and normalize it again. Now I've been using these all for 35 years at Hippocrates and it's been phenomenal uh, the, the things we've seen in helping to support the immune system. But again we cleanse the body you know of course everyone gets colonic therapies and we use wheatgrass, we brought wheatgrass back to the world it's almost like inoculating figuratively blood into your body so the old weak blood can go away. You have this vigor vigorous blood at that stage that can function in the way that it should because you're made of blood cells. Right. Re remember that. Yeah. Of all the different types of therapies, you know, you have fasting, you have um, colonics, you have aromatherapy, saunas, all this. For people to practice at home, any particular types of therapies you could recommend for someone to do on a regular basis? You know? Yeah, if, if some can get a sauna, I mean, a sauna has turned out to be one of the great uh, tools in our arsenal and infrared saunas. They're not expensive. Now they make them without any electromagnetic fields coming out. Uh, tonight I'm actually speaking and the group that's sponsoring me oh. makes the first in the world no electromagnetic. I take a sauna every day. This oh. morning I was in a sauna for 30 minutes. Uh, so no matter where I'm traveling in the world 365 days a year, the earth is so pervaded with toxins, invisible toxins, and when you take an infrared sauna, it literally takes 87% more waste out of the body than a normal sauna. Mm. Of course, at a hotel, it's a normal sauna, but at home, I'm doing the infrared sauna. So the infrared, you would recommend over the steam um, sauna? Well, steam is different. Steam takes care of the kidney, the lungs, the bladder, water-based organs, uh, where saunas take care of the fat-based organs, and they're our largest concern today, because fat is where the heavy metals and the chemicals reside. And so if you had both, it would be wonderful. But many people say, you know, where do I put a sauna in my house? Right. Or less esteem in a sauna. Right. As some of you listening are quite affluent, buy both of them and invite us over. <laughs> yes. Or build an extra room in the house. No, that's right. Build a room <laughs> for the second story. <laughs> a sauna room. What about, for example, um, massage? You know, a bit, like, uh, yeah. women, men, I tend to say women, men too, but more of the women I know, they say, they love to go for their weekly or bi-weekly uh, massage, whatever. Well, if you look at the University of Miami's touch therapy research, it was amazing. It actually uh, elongates life. People live longer when you're touched. There is a way that the electromagnetic frequency in the body is grounded. It's almost like everything becomes calmer. But most important, if you have a great therapeutic massage, not rubby-dubby feel-good massage, what you're actually doing is helping the lymphatic system and the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys push waste out. I know as healthy and as strong as I am, and I've been living this way for 45 years, when I come out of a massage, I actually have extra waste coming out. That's why, as you notice, after body work, they always say drink, because mm -hmm. you're flushing, flushing, flushing. Fluid, yeah. So, I mean, although I don't follow my own rule on this one, it would be great if you could have a weekly massage. You know, I'm lucky if I have 10 a year. Right, and getting rid of stress. You got it. The big you culprit go. in life. That's a killer. Stress is a mess. Yeah, that's why we eat bad and smoke cigarettes right. and take drugs and run around and drive cars fast. But we're going to turn it around. We are, no question. The world's going to come back. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very, very much. It was our honor, our honor to have you here, Dr. Brian Clemens from Hippocrates Health Institute. The wisdom, the brilliance, it'll move on. You know, I know we go through ups and downs in life, but it always ends up for the better. So, our pleasure to have you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks for having me. I am your host, Chapati. This is Food with Life. Thank you very much for watching with our very special guest, Dr. Brian Clements.
Bye-bye for now. Take care, be happy, and eat well. Bye-bye.